Hello, tomato growers. This is Ray Cruzy with your next tomato growing update, which is update number two. And just before I talked about our things today, I wanted to mention to you that we have 159 people as part of this tomato growing program, and I wanted to welcome you all to it. We're super excited to have you all on board. I also wanted to mention that in tomato growing update number one, you might remember that I'm just doing a personal experiment of growing marigolds in my own tomatoes to see if it'll reduce the number of uh, pests that I see in my tomatoes. And Martha's Gardens has graciously offered to grow a free four pack of marigolds for everyone as part of this program. So if you would like to claim your free pack, uh, a free four pack of marigolds from Martha's Gardens, her contact information is in the email version or the paper version of this update. So with that, um, to our information today. Now, hopefully your tomatoes are close to mine in terms of size and things like that. So these were seeded on the 5th of April. And these tomatoes are growing underneath the fluorescent lights upstairs in one of our bedrooms. And I'll be honest with you, I have no idea why the ones on the right are smaller than the ones on the left, because they've been seeded the exact same date, time, everything, light, um, so I guess this is a true uh, true testament that your results might vary because they're varying right here in front of my eyes with no uh, explana explanation that I can come up with. But anyway, uh, something that I wanted to talk to you about is watering. So when it comes to watering our transplants here, something to think about is, is that we have lots of above ground growth that's starting to grow here. And our foliar diseases that we'll talk about at a later date uh, really favor moist, wet leaves on tomatoes. And so my goal is to try and keep these tomato leaves as dry as I can. And so what I'm going to be doing from this point forward is watering from the bottom up. And so I have a waterproof tray here, and I'll just pour some water here. I'll demo it in a second and let them absorb that water, sit in that pool for about half an hour, and then I'll take them out, collect that water, and then give it to them at the next time I water. So that's, that's helpful in trying to reduce the leaves being wet. Now, you might still prefer or want to water from the top down, and that's totally okay. You'll probably have great results. But this is just an extra precautionary thing that I do to help avoid disease. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is fertilizer. So I normally don't put fertilizer on my tomatoes for the short term that they're in these little pots here. So I, I think you're going to have great results not giving them fertilizer, but uh, my job as an extension agent is to provide you with options. And so in the idea uh, that you want to apply fertilizer, uh, I have a premix here that I made up from a concentrate and clearly marked this recycled plastic bottle so that no one thinks that it's, you know, the blue raspberry Kool-Aid or whatever, and labeled it clearly with what it is. And optimally for fertilizer, um, you're looking for something that's high in nitrogen. So the nitrogen is the first letter or the first number, which is four. The second number is phosphorus, and the third number is potassium. And like I said, it's better or optimal to have the first number larger than the rest of the numbers. But for the sake of uh, demoing this and stuff, I, I just mixed up some fertilizer. And this is going to do okay because we have some nitrogen in there. But for transplants early in the season, you're looking for something with a little more nitrogen than the other um, components that you see there in the, in the premix. So... Um, this isn't optimal, but for the sake of demoing, I've, I've just um, showed you here what I do if I was to, uh, to use fertilizer, which I do use on occasion. So, but uh, anyway, here I was going to show you what I do to water is I just pour the water here into the tray and just kind of let them soak for a little while and absorb all that water from the bottom up. So this fertilizer here, they'll absorb all of that uh, that fertilizer from that water and stuff. And, and being that I don't want to mix fertilizer over and over again, I'll just pour it back in the container and continue reusing that and feeding that to these, these plants here. Something else that you can also do to help stave off disease is a fan. So getting some air moving around these plants so that the humidity is not sitting among the leaves is also something that you can do. I, with my grow lights and stuff like that, don't find that very favorable to do in my own house but it's something that you can choose to do if you would like to. 
So like I said, I'll let these tomatoes sit here for about a half an hour and absorb some water. And when they're done absorbing water, I'll pour all that back in here and then I'm going to go set them back in their window cell. So in preparation for the next tomato growing update, I want, to, I want to encourage you to think about something. And that is hardening off these transplants. We're going to gradually acclimate them to the outdoors over a five to seven day period. And I want to encourage you to think about where you might acclimate or harden off your tomatoes at. So I'm going to show you where ours are going to be acclimated or hardened off and that is our windbreak here to the north of the house. So you can see there's some shade in there. I'm eventually going to put those these transplants in the shade and gradually bring them out over the five to seven day period so that way on the final day that they're being acclimated that uh, they're in full sun. Now, something else that I also have to give a thought to as well is, is wildlife mitigation. So I know I have squirrels out there, I know I have rabbits, and they're going to find my hard work rather tasty. So I've got to come up with or think about some way to keep them off of my transplants, so we'll see what I can get creative with. And I'm just encouraging you to think about that and maybe get creative too and be prepared to deal with those animals if they uh, become a problem. So with that, thanks for joining me for tomato growing update number two. This is Ray Cruzy, your food systems program coordinator and master gardener coordinator with the ISU Extension Outreach Office of Dubuque County. Happy growing, Dubuque County.